in here now? Welcome to the Asian PCI third learning Studying in medical physics in Bangladesh and working at the South Asia Center for Medical Physics and Cancer Research (SCMECR). I am with you as a moderator of today's program. Good to see you again. Today our honorable speaker is Dr. Mamun Bhav, nuclear and medical radiation physicist and certified radiation safety advisor, Sydney, Australia. In 1985, he completed his PhD in physics in Germany. From Dhaka University, Bangladesh, he completed his master's degree in nuclear physics in 1972 and bachelor degree in physics in 1974. He has 36 years of professional experience. He has lots of publications in the international journal. He is the founder member of Australian Brachytherapy Group, ABG. Please to inform you, this program has been affiliated by International Organization for Medical Physics as CPT event for medical physicists with 52 CPT credit points. This is inform you that there will be an examination at the end of day places with practical session and group discussion. You must pass the examination for You will get only a legal certificate. So it's said, I remind you that our your question or any comment type in the chat box. So pick up your question after the lecture. And kindly mute your microphone and turn up your webcam. No more delay. Today uh, our lecture is on bracket therapy, QA and safety. Now I invite Dr. Mamun uh, to deliver your Okay, I'm now sharing my screen. So now you are able to uh, share your screen. Please try it now. Yep. Okay. Uh, can everyone see me? And sorry, see the slides? Yes, sir, we can see the slide. Okay, so can I, I can start here? Yeah? Yes, sir, please uh, press at the height option and make your slide full screen. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So the subject of my talk is brachytherapy quality assurance and radiation safety. Uh, Although the talk has two parts, naturally, quality assurance and radiation protection are something overlapping in brachytherapy. So although I'll do it in two separate parts, I will naturally show you that uh, actually they're overlapping in others. Now, if you compare with external beam radiotherapy, the quality assurance and radiation safety in brachytherapy are interrelated. That is due to the fact that in external beam radiotherapy, once you switch off, then there is no radiation. So the radiation is only during the patient exposure. Whereas in brachytherapy, the source is always active. That means although it is well shielded under in the container and then it's taken out, which enters in the patient's body, naturally, this is the active source and it decays also. So that means all the QA activity in brachytherapy is somehow related with also the radiation protection. And every single step of the QA, if it is periodic or if you do the spot checks, they are relevant naturally to the radiation safety aspects underlying it. And the workflow, 
is based on the optimization of dose delivery to the patient, whereas at the same time, limiting the occupational to dose to the staff members. And this is accordance with the Alara strategy. I think everyone knows the Alara strategy. Uh, I'll talk about it later on. And that is based on time, distance, and shielding. So what is a quality assurance? Quality assurance is nothing but everything that is planned and the systematic actions that are necessary to provide that a particular product or a particular service will satisfy a given requirement for quality. That means you have some guidelines and if you follow, then the product will satisfy the quality of the service. So why we didn't need it? Now, in the last time there was a, a considerable development in radiotherapy as well as in brachytherapy that includes the technological development, the detection development, the image modalities, and naturally with all these improvements, naturally the quality assurance is also gaining its importance. For the radical treatment, it is shown that the inaccurate delivery of radiation can result in recurrence of the disease, either due to underdose or serious complication due to an overdose. The fundamental requirements is to achieve the local control of the patient. And we need also the quality assurance because national and international regulatory guidelines requires that a QA committee exist within a radiotherapy department, which looks after the quality improvement, quality control, as well as the quality assurance. And it has been long recognized that QA is vital to ensure achievement of a safe and effective treatment in any modalities. So this is the chain that is following the, or so-called the treatment chain which starts with more immobilization, then it includes the imaging, tumor localization, planning, patient positioning, treatment, and the underlying quality assurance and verification of the treatment. So you see, this is a part, integral part of the chain of treatment. Now, definition of the quality control and quality assurance. The quality control can be defined as part of quality management, focus on fulfilling quality requirements. So it depends on the quality requirements. Whereas quality assurance relates to the procedure or process that is performed and in order to uh, uh, keep up with aspects of the quality management. So quality control is used to verify the quality of the output and quality assurance is the process of managing the quality. With this diagram, it will be clear. This is a quality management. So that includes the quality assurance, quality control, and quality improvement. So the department has a quality assurance program, and that has to be verified by the quality control if there is any backdrop. And if there is any backdrop, then it is improved, and then it becomes a part of the quality assurance. So this is the total quality management program. So here in the diagram, you can see the same thing. So this is the quality control of the individual quality inputs, and then it is processed, and then it becomes a part of the quality assurance procedure. You can also consider as an umbrella, so umbrella of quality management system, which includes the quality control is the holding the the whole procedure. Now, the importance of quality assurance is to prevent errors or the hazard makers. That means the new procedure or deviation from the common procedure. So that, it, that these are all the hazard make markers. And we have to prevent those errors through the quality assurance. Inadequate training or inadequate supervision failure of a team member to follow establishment po established policies, making a mistake while trying to follow the policies, inadequate policies and procedures, distraction, 
hurried work condition, lack of staffing, expectation bias, mental post concentration phase, poor communication, poorly designed software interfaces, and the machine malfunction. These are the hazard markers, and quality assurance will prevent those errors. So these are the few quality assurance of the treatment planning. I will not go through all the things. I'll just go through the conceptual part, and this is elaborately explained in the slides. So the hardware device of the tra treatment planning system contains the computer, digitizer, and plotter. Then it has to see the, the accuracy of the device of the planning process should be checked routinely with some test cases to see that if they're reproducible, the verification set uh, test should also include translation from the film to the Cartesian, to the coordinate system of the computer. Then the check of consistency between quantities and units. So the main source of brachytherapy error could be incorrect source calibration and the incorrect use of the dosimetric quantities of the units of the calculation. So it is essential to verify the correct leveling of input and output quantities. Special care should be taken in regard to the specification of source strength or the so-called activity. So the QA in the treatment planning is based on all the components of the planning, which is, includes the reconstruction, source visualization, accuracy, algorithm, dose evaluation, and the accuracy of the hard copy scale, the printouts. Then also the computer versus manual dose calculations. That means it has to be verified by the manual dose and additional tests should be performed on the planning system to safeguard the quality of the planning. And that includes the inverse square law for the point source, summation of the dose for multiple sources, and the scaling and so on. Check of the decay corrections for temporary implants, which is the HDR brachytherapy. The accuracy of this computer calculated dose roads those rates should be at, uh, checked of the implant should be verified with the manual calculation. For the permanent implants or seed brachytherapy, the accuracy of the computer calculated dose to uh, complete the source decay should be also verified. And for both type of implants, temporary or permanent, the choice of units of the source strength, dose rate and total dose should also be verified. So these are once again, all the checks that needs to be done, uh, source entry, source library, and source strength, and the other tests. The treatment equipment related quality assurance, that means which does the treatment delivery. The two main factors are location of the unit, where it is located, and frequency of the use. So the quality assurance program is based on that. If it is frequently used, then the quality assurance program is also done frequently. The equipment QA frequency, there is no legal uh, standards. Uh, this is defined by the license conditions and the frequency of the QA testing often determined by the frequency of use. If it is used often, then the QA tests are done also often. So these are the different type of uh, QA done. So on each treatment day, the door interlocks are tested, light, alarms, console functions, switches, batteries, printer, paper, and everything. The weekly is accuracy of the source and dummy loading, source positioning, spacing. Then source change, or when the source is changed for the HDR brachytherapy, which could be quarterly. The calibration of the source, the timer check, the check of accuracy of source guides, and annually, you have to check also the dose calculation algorithm and simulate the emergency conditions. And these are the tolerance limit. So these things should be all functional and accuracy of the positioning should be one millimeter. The timer accuracy should be within 3% and also the source strength should be within 3%. These are the periodic spot checks that needs to be done. 
the electrical interacts of the door that is closed and if it is open then the source is back in the container automatically the source exposure indicator lies that the source is out viewing or intercom system that means the audio visual system will be working you should be able to see the patient and you should be able to talk with the patient if none of this work then although every other thing is working you are not supposed to be treating yeah you should have the patient in view and you should be able to communicate with them this is quite important the radiation monitor to indicate the source position that has to be also working the emergency response equipment should be ready the timer accuracy should be tested the clock in the unit's computer this is quite important and many people they don't understand this fact that once the source is calibrated the computer has all the data when the source is calibrated and was the source state and afterwards on the basis of the source decay it calculates what will be the source strength at present at the particular moment so if the computer date and time is incorrect then the source strength that it will be showing is also incorrect and what will happen is that either it will show the source strength which is less or it will be showing the source strength, uh, strength which will be more than the actual source strength and if you still treat then that will naturally on the basis of the source strength that will change the dual time and you will be under dosing or overdosing the patient so it is quite important to check the date and time of the computer is exact in order to avoid the overdosing and underdosing of the patient and decade source activity in the unit's computer is correct so that should be independently checked also so these are the monthly or quarterly check timer accuracy dummy check emergency check and everything and we have gone through this the functionality things are console indicators the printer and papers are ready intercom and cameras are working batteries are charged in the unit the radiation monitors are working and test run is also working the qa test should also be done and there are three main endpoints of the qa if there is a system failure to check the accuracy of the source that means the source of strength or something accuracy of the spatial positioning or the positioning check and the accuracy of the treatment duration of the time so these are the source position accuracy can be checked visually or through the autoradiograph and source activity should be checked also question comes is it necessary but it is absolutely necessary in order to avoid the overdosing and underdosing of the patient the applicator should be also checked before the treatment if they have the correct size correct it operating correctly and the application applicator insertions are okay the physicists are present and checked it the implant localization and simulation through radiographs are okay the treatment prescription are okay and it is incompatible with the treatment plan and the implant design and evaluation everything so so these are once again all these uh, tests that needed to be done and how it is done and when it will be done so i'm not going through it we have already discussed all these things typical checklists could include have the pretreatment quality qa test have been done is the prescription completed or signed has the treatment plan been independently reviewed by a second person or a third person also have the treatment parameters been reviewed by the second individual all the forms are completed and signed and do the pretreatment radiographs confirm that the treatments are entered perfectly and is done exactly uh, Pressure to treat quickly can contribute to user-generated errors, so everything should be done in a calm and concentration manner. 
independent check of treatment parameters by a second person is always useful and, and must be done. And preparation and use of well planned treatment forms and checklist are to be prepared before the treatment. Uh, for the brachytherapy source, the physical, I mean, at the time of uh, source when it arrives at the department where it is purchased, physical chemical forms are documented, uh, source encapsulation, either for permanent or temporary uh, source are to be checked. Radionuclide distribution and source uniformity also documented and location of the radionuclide within plus minus one percent if also checked and in every use the calibration of the source is to be done for the shipment package the package containing shipment of radionuclide must be monitored immediately when it is received by the department to see if there is any physical damage or if there is any excessive radiation level then are to be expected Package surface also should be in, investigated with wipe test to see if there is any contamination or leakage. And radiation levels should be measured and recorded both at the surface of the package and for several points at the distance of one meter from the package. This is international guideline. So that is the wipe tests of the source. For the individual encapsulated sources, either permanent implant or temporary implant, all the individual capsule resources should be wiped. In. All new sources should be tested at the time of receipt. And sources should be kept in permanent inventory, should be tested at intervals of six months. That means which are used or which goes to the inventory and is there in the storage or something like that. Measurement of contamination is usually carried out with sensitive scintillation well counter because uh, of the source strength or something like that. It has to be a sensitive detector. And source is considered to be leaking if it emits more than 200 becquerel of removable contamination is measured through the wipe test or something like that, which corresponds to five nanocurie. Autograph radiography and uniformity checks of the activity. So this could be done by radiography or autoradiography, that means a dummy run of the uh, treatment by using a single film exposure with a simulator. And this can be done in order to check the activity of the source's uniform. And developed film is a standard with a densitometer to determine the isodensity and isodose profiles. And autoradiographs are very useful for checking batch of seeds or ribbons with seeds to be established. Uh, nowadays, all this uh, radiography or film uh, dosimetries are done with the gap chromic film, uh, mostly. Uniformity of activity within each seed and presence of inadvertent seeds or non-radioactive seeds in the bunch because in the permanent implant, or which is also called the very low dose rate uh, brachytherapy, uh, the, there are many seats to be used at one go. So the calibration chain is a brachytherapy source should have the source strength calibration testable to the national standards laboratory. It is same thing like the uh, external beam. In some instances, it may be necessary to establish a second level of traceability by comparison with the calibrated source of the same type. Comparison calibration are best done with a well type chamber, which is also called reentrant ionization chamber, which is suitable for calibration of both high and low strength activity source. And most of the laboratory, they are using now the well type chamber. And it is quite e easy to use this type of chamber. So this is a well type chamber, and this is the electrometer. And, and, electrometer which is attached with it. Most standard laboratories will calibrate stem ionization chamber for different radiation and an interpolation of extrapolation method is then used to obtain the calibration coefficient for a different given radionuclide. Uh, in our case it is iodine 125 or for permanent implant or 
iridium 192 for the high dose red bracket therapy or temporary implant. Activity of all sources should be measured upon receipt with a calibrated local dosimeter, and the results should be compared with the manufacturer's certificate of source strength. I remember the manufacturer's source uh, certificate gives a plus minus 5% error. So that's why when you do the calibration, uh, uh, that is also the an error is plus minus 3% is uh, taken into consideration. Constancy check, that means a calibrated dosimeter should be checked against a constancy uh, type of chamber or source. And in case of brachytherapy source, normally the cesium-137 is used. Cobalt-60 teletherapy machine is in the case of stem type ionization chamber and commercial strontium or yttrium calibration source in the case of stem type ionization chamber. So in our case, the standard laboratory does with the cesium-137 type of chamber. And if you want to use the ionization chamber to do your calibration, then you have to cross-check or do the constancy check with a strontium or yttrium source, which has a long half-life. So the error limit are uh, very low. Periodic constancy check measurement also provides a good quality assurance check for the entire measuring system. Remember, the measuring system is quite important because it gives you the actual source strength or something like that. And that's why it is quite important to have it have its uh, constancy also checked. Appropriate calibration coefficient for the entire dosimetric system must be obtained from the standard laboratory on the regular basis. And normally, uh, this uh, standard uh, calibration set, which includes, say, uh, the reentrant uh, well type chamber with the electrometer is sent to the standard laboratory in every two years to do the calibration of the. So these are the QA test for a well ionization chamber and ADSF calibration documented precision is within plus minus 2%, linearity within plus minus 1%, collection efficiency within plus minus 1%, geometrical and link dependency is documented, energy dependency is also documented, source wall dependency is also documented, and venting is also documented. And every two years, the linearity checks should be done, which should be within plus minus 1%. And each use of ongoing evaluation, the redundancy check should be done, which should be plus minus 1%, and leakage will be also documented. Regular check of the source and applicator for the mechanical properties, and mechanical integrity of the of the source and the applicator. This could be done by visual inspection, leak testing, and activity measurements. That is for the source. And visual inspection and radiographic evaluation of all applicators that is used for the treatment should be carried out uh, periodically. So these are the example of two applicators, like gynecological applicators. And so it should be checked that the assembly is structurally sound. All clamps, screws, and retaining devices are functional. And source insert carrier sits correctly in the corpus state. So this is, these are the source entrant. Regular check of the source and applicator should be done. And that is done by like the source activity long half-life source maintained with permanent inventory should be checked at reasonable frequencies. Short half-life sources used either for temporary or permanent implant should have their activity measured at the time of receival, and the results should be compared with the value of the manufacturer certificate. Any discrepancies between locally determined and manufactured stated value exceeding 10% should be investigated further. So if there is a discrepancy of 10 plus minus 10% with the certificate value of the source strength and the measured value of the source strength, then that should be investigated further. And patient 
cannot be treated until the discrepancy is explained and also check of source positioning within an after loading device is of appropriate radiograph markers and combination of radiographic image with an audio, auto radiograph are convenient methods for checking the source positioning. So quality assurance in brachytherapy, the quality management program will be based on all facilities performing brachytherapy procedures should have in place some form of quality management program. This is a must and this is defined by the national and international regulatory body. There should be a quality management program and quality uh, management or quality uh, assurance quality committee the objective of the program should be well defined to ensure compliance with the standard good practices program should include the written procedure for prescribing recording and documenting each treatment and brachytherapy procedure manual should also include written policies on reporting and recording the treatment errors so the quality management programs, the main objectives are preparation of a physician's written directive before administration of a treatment, the clear identification of the patient, the documentation of treatment and related calculation, the compliance of each treatment with written directive, and identification and evaluation by any unintended deviation from the prescription. So if for some reason, there is some deviation is done, then that should be also well documented, signed by the physician and the reason. So, in conclusion, a comprehensive QA program is tailored to needs of the department. Uh, the written procedure should be there, forms, a related form should be there, checklists should be there. The standardization should be there and redundancy checks are also documented. And there should be adequate stuffing. They should have abundant training. And it should be noted the errors caused by machine function malfunctions are rarely happening, but human errors are quite frequent. So now let's go to the second part, which is not actually a second part, but just we have to do some introduction to radiation safety and then apply it, how it is applied to brachytherapy. So these are the two important effects of radiation protection. This is called the deterministic effect, which means that its effect is uh, apparent at a particular threshold. That means if you see there is no effect up to a particular dose and then there is the effect. And this is depending on the fact of due to cell killing, the threshold is typically several gray and specific to particular tissues. And for example, uh, skin burning, and severity of harm is dose dependent on this stage. Whereas the stochastic effect, so this one is much more related with radiotherapy. This one is much more related with radiation protection in the sense that it has no threshold. That means any dose is bad. So severity is independent of the dose. Due to the cell changes and proliferation towards the malignity, there's no threshold applicable also to a very small dose and the effect increases with the dose. So severity independent of the dose and that is, for example, the cancer. So that means the severity is actually could happen also very low dose or also in the high dose. So this is something like related with radiation protection. So what are the objectives of radiation protection? Now it has been generally assumed that even very, very small dose of ionizing radiation could be potentially harmful. 
and as we are talking about the linear no threshold hypothesis or the stochastic procedure so therefore a person must be protected from ionizing radiation at all dose levels a person here is a mostly a radiation worker or something appreciate the need of radiation protection be familiar with the recommendation of icrp which is international uh, commission for radiation protection and the requirements of the iaea basic safety standards you can go to the iaea website to see the basic safety standard that is applied to medicine appreciate the fundamental principle of justification optimization and dose limitation in radiation protection which are the three main principles of radiation protection and understand the importance of the bss in the context of radiation protection in medicine so what is icrp this is a group of recognized leaders in the field of radiation protection it was established in 1928 by international congress of radiology icr and now it is renamed as icrp it is concerned with the protection of humans from ionizing radiation official relationship with world health organization iaea and international commission of radiation unit it convinced a task group of expert to address particular issues and it issues and report, reports and recommendations and every year there are multiple publication of those reports so the principal objectives and strategy of the radiation protection so the, the system of radiation project protection is based on three principles the first one is called justification and that is means justification of the practice say the hospital the benefit of a practice must offset the radiation detriment that means in order to giving the radiation actually you are the patients are benefiting so that must offset the radiation detriment or something so that is called the justification of the practice the optimization of protection and safety the exposure and likelihood of exposure should be kept as low as reasonably achievable economic and social factors being taken into account that is called the optimization of protection and safety and the dose limitation dose limits should be set to ensure that no individual faces an unacceptable risk of normal circumstances but there is no dose limitation applied to the medical exposure that means the patient who are under treatment or under diagnosis in radiology thing however both justification and optimizations are essential for the medical exposure and the strategy of the radiation protection is alara which is as low as reasonably achievable principle and that is time distance and shielding and that affects the radiation staff and public uh, we'll talk about this later on so optimization of treatment in primary objective of the radiation therapy and this includes the optimization of dose distribution of the target the reduction of possibility of severe side effects by minimizing the dose to other critical structures and the accident prevention so these are optimization of the uh, treatment these are the different dose ranges and different diagnosis diagnostic and uh, epidemiological studies and cancer therapy also so i'm not talking about that but it is good look to look about these dose ranges this is naturally in sievert everyone knows what sievert is dose limits for the radiation worker this is quite important to know an effective dose of 20 millisievert per year averaged over five consecutive years that means if someone gets because of some accidental reason 50 millisievert in one year then he should not get other 50 millisievert in other four years so that means in five years 
it makes 100 millisieverts or an average of 20 millisieverts. So that's why it is said averaged over five consecutive years. So that allows you to get more than 20 millisievert in one year, but in five millisievert, the average should not be more than 20 millisievert. And 20 millisievert, if a worker works 250 days a year, eight hours per day, which means eight times 250 makes 2000 hours per year, so 20 millisievert divided by 2000 makes 10 microsievert per hour. So that is actually the average dose rate that the patient, that the staff should get, not more than that. An effective dose of 50 millisievert in any single year, that is allowed, as I was saying. But the important is, average over five years, it should not be more than 20 millisievert. An equivalent dose to the length of the eye of 150 millisievert in any year. Length of the eye, that's had less radiobiological effects, so that's why it can you can give more dose, you can get more dose eye lens. An equivalent dose of 500 millisievert to the extremities, like hands, feet, and skin in any year. The biological uh, ratios are quite low for this, and that's why more dose are allowed for this. Pregnant staff should be treated as normal public, although they are from radiation staff, but if it's a pregnant staff, it is also limited to one millisievert per year as normal public. So the members of public should not get one millisievert per year. So this may be increased to five millisievert in a single provide year, provided that the average over five consecutive years is one millisievert per year. Same way like the other one. Equivalent dose to the length of, of eye for 15 millisievert in a year, and extremities or skin 50 millisievert a year. You see it is 20 times less than the radiation work. General public. Now let's talk about the radiation strategies. It's called the ALARA principle, as low as reasonably achievable. This means making every reasonable effort to maintain exposure to radiation as far below the dose limits as it is practical. And it's consistent with the purpose of which the license activity is undertaken. Taking into account the state of the technology, the economics of the improvement in relation to the state of technology. Uh, sorry, this is two times come. The technology economics of the improvement in, to the benefits of the public health and safety and the other societal and socioeconomical consideration. And in relation to the utilization of nuclear energy and licensed materials for the public. So as I was saying, there are three parameters for the Alara, time, shielding, and distance. So this has to be strapped. These three parameters has to be noted. What are these three parameters say? Dose is proportional to the time exposed. That means if, depending on the particular dose, if you remain in that place for a longer time, you get more dose. So that means you have to reduce time. So if there is a radiation emitting equipment or radioactive source, if you don't need to, you just try to reduce your time near a radiation source. You don't need to. If you don't need to stay there, yeah, just reduce the time. So the consequences is reduce time in contact with radiation source as much as compatible with the task. The training of a particular task should be the, and if radioactive dummy source could be used to do a particular task, then it is preferable to use a dummy source in order if you have to stay longer, and then it is better to use dummy source so that you have no exposure. 
But the important thing is to reduce the time near a radiation emitting equipment, a radioactive source. Second one is distance. Increase your distance from the source. And as everyone knows, the distance effect and inverse square law says that if you double the distance, then the dose fall is one fourth. So by increasing the distance, you also dis dis uh, decrease the distance inversely proportional to the square of the dose. So, so this says that controlling an external radiation hazard is by distance. Charged particle alpha and beta have a finite range in air. The number of photons, X-rays, and gammas per unit area decreases with increasing distance from the source. So this is important for the point source. Hello? So this is the point source. Inverse square law applies for this. This is the inverse square law for point source. For brachytherapy source, which is a line source, rather a line source, because that has a finite dimension, uh, we would rather say that the dose is not reduced as a square, but it is inversely proportional to the dose. So increase the dose, increase the distance by two times, the dose falls into half. So that is for the point source, which is much more in external beam and radiotherapy. And for the brachytherapy source, this is much more like a linear, uh, inversely linear. And the shielding, if you have something no, between you and... Legs only. Hello? Hello, sir? You are talking with me? Yes, sir. Yeah. We have, 50, we have 50 minutes left only for the time constant. 10 minutes, yeah? Yeah, yeah. 15 minutes, okay. Yeah, I'll be finishing there. Thank you. So if you have something in the shielding in between you and the radiation sources, that is the best. And here is the, here you can see alpha source, alpha radiation, you can stop by a paper, a beta, you need a piece of plastic. Gamma and X-ray, you need lead and neutron, you need really concrete or very light material. And with the hand, you can stop alpha or beta, but not the gamma. So alpha particle can be stopped by paper, beta by plexiglass, gamma, it can it needs several centimeter of lead where the neutrons might need several feet of concrete. So the shielding says that if you are between yourself and emit radiation emitting uh, device, a shielding, then you don't need to bother about the other prospect, which is the time and the distance. So summarizing method to reduce the external radiation exposure, Minimize the time you spend in a radiation field or near a radiation emitting equipment. Maximize the distance from the radiation source to you and introduce materials which reduce or eliminate the radiation field between the radiation source and you or introduce shielding materials. Now, don't confuse radiation with contamination. Radiation is energy in motion. Whereas contamination is the physical presence of radioactive materials on something. So many people does this confusion, the, the, the confusion between radiation and contamination. So you have to be very careful about that. The storage of radiation sources in brachytherapy, in clinical and radiation safety perspective. So you can read it. Uh, it is also the same thing that radiation half-life should be long for temporary application and short for permanent implants. The physical form should be inert to body fluids and tissues. It should not have any gaseous radioactive daughters like radon, which was for radium. For the purpose of shielding and for dose reduction to tissues outside the tumor volume, it should not 
emit high energy photon. This is quite important. That's why all the brachytherapy sources are low energy uh, gamma emitter. That means that, and the radiation compared to the external beam, which is radiation from out to in, in brachytherapy, radiation from in to out. So if you have a very low energy photons, then the isodoses are so compact, that means outside the body, the radiation level is quite low. So the body works as a shielding. So that means, but then lower the energy, better body is a better shielding for them. So that's why in brachytherapy, low energy photons are used. And that is for the purpose of shielding and dose reduction to tissues outside the tumor volume. The source, it should not have no de undesirable beta emission. Sorry, this is beta. It should be available in high specific activity so that it uh, enables fabrication of high activity sources with dimension of a millimeter or less because it has to go through the cutter. So dimension of the source is very low. So it has to have a very high activity, each, uh, specific activity. It should be preferable available in solid form and it should be cost effective. Dose rate at prescription point are significantly uh, different. For high dose, it is like 1200 or 12 gray per hour, whereas for the LDR or low dose rate brachytherapy, for seed brachytherapy, it is like 4 to 200 centigrade per hour. LD, LDR brachytherapy can be permanent and temporary, while well, HDR is always temporary. Temporary LDR brachytherapy may require continuous treatment for hours or days, where HDR treatment lasts more than one hour, and it is done for a few fractions, like over a few weeks. Patients are treated with LDRB may be released with implanted radioactive source, while HDR should be released uh, sh should never be released with radioactive sources. That means source is taken out and then the HDR patient is gone. Let to go home. Uh, so LDR has also very low half-life. These differences should be taken into account in radiation protection. So LDR wipe test should be done and in the MLA LDR treatment, source need to be ordered specifically for the treatment. That means it should have a particular specific, particular activity at the time of the treatment. So sources are produced on the basis of that. Patients should be surveyed before LDR treatment. During the treatment procedure, sources, if not an in afterloader, need to be visually checked. And after the procedure, surveys should be done in all the materials around the patient or something. So you have we could have a read of this. These are the other radiation aspects of the LDR treatment. You have to go very fast. For permanent implants, the criteria of patient release is based on the patient radiation survey. The exposure to the public from the implant. Because the patient is going home with radioactive sources still inside the body. So we need to do a patient survey and radiation safety instructions should be provided to the patient, including several instructions to protect pregnant women and children from being exposed to excessive radiation of the patient. The patient should be advised to minimize contact with pregnant women and children, and they should also be provided for contact information so the radiation-related uh, concern could be answered. This is naturally for a few days because the source the half-life is low, so it decays also very fast. I mean, within a few days, naturally, the activity is almost zero. This is for the HDR treatment, and this is periodically replaced. So uh, the source half-life is uh, higher. It's better to have very high so that you don't need to change the source, but that is not possible because otherwise the energy would also be high or something like that. Source strength should be independently measured during the source replacement and periodically thereafter. The much HDR procedure are delivered with computerized system. The emergency instructions should be posted in the control area. 
radiation monitor and safety interlocks and interruptions button should be checked before each treatment. Patients should be surveyed before and before the treatment. Radiation imaging for safety equipment should be ready to be used in case of any accident. Patient and treatment should be closely and continuously monitored through the audiovisual system. And after the, fish, after the treatment is finished, the patient and equipment should be surveyed again to ensure that the source has returned to the unit. So radiation aspect in after loading, no exposure in theater, optimization of medical exposure possible, no transport of radiation. Life implants should be avoided for temporary implants, significant advantage in terms of radiation safety, in particular in after loader is used because then you are not close to the radioactive source. Radiation monitoring around the patient, we have talked a few things about that. And the important thing is the radiation level in adjoining patient area should be low, so that no individual is exposed for the equivalent dose exceeding 0.2 millisievert in any one hour. This is quite important for the permanent implant. Prior to the release of the implant, a patient, uh, of an implant patient, permanent implant patient from the hospital, the patient and the patient room must be surveyed. Also. For a patient with permanent temporary implant, a survey must be done upon removal of the source to confirm that the source is removed from the patient. Patient with permanent implants may be discharged of the hospital. If at the time of the discharge, the radiation level at one meter from the implant is less than 0 0.5 millisievert per hour. And patient discharged from the hospital with permanent implant should be instructed to keep distance from children and pregnant women. We have talked about this. The examples of human error, use of wrong source, wrong patient, wrong treatment site, wrong catheter. These are hazards due to the mechanical failure of the system. Legal requirements is licensing of the facility, licensing of the worker, incident reporting to the different body, regulatory bodies, and the personal dose monitoring. So in the conclusion, radiation is a double-edged sword. You can treat a patient, but you can also harm a patient. So it can benefit patient and society as a whole, but irresponsible application may be harmful. Follow the regulatory guidelines and expert advice. And if you are in doubt, please consult. So these are the roles within the hospital, between the doctors, nurses, technologists, and the physicists and engineering. The most important thing is the risk reduction. Train your staff to cope with the most critical conditions. And here I have given a few references on quality assurance and radiation safety for your personal reading. So that's the end of the talk. If there is any question. Thank you, sir. It's really very inform informative. Um, it's time to pick up some questions from our participants. Um, my first question is from Manvi Dichi. Uh, she wants to know the explanation, the precision of the well type ionization chamber 2% limit. Excuse me, again? Explain the precision of the well type ionization chamber 2% limit. Yeah. 2%. Yes, sir. Well, normally when you measure the precision, because the radioactive source has a, that means the source that is supplied, it has also an, a, precision of plus minus 5%. If you look at the certificate, it's given like a source of strength plus minus 5%. But naturally, when you measure with the ionization chamber, you try to be as close to the absolute value of the source. And there, naturally, you take like plus minus uh, 2% or at most 3%. If you're more than 5%, then you have to investigate it, why it is so. It might be that you have received a wrong certificate or other things, okay? 
Okay, thank you, sir. And second one also from her. How yeah. is the uh, two millisiever dose limit is defined for occupated occupational workers? How is the how is the twenty millisiever dose limit is defined for um, occupational workers? Why is this value taken? Why this value is twenty millisievert? Yes, sir. Okay, the the ICRP naturally they do many epidemiological studies and other things, and on the basis of that, they naturally on the basis of those research, they set a limit for the radiation worker or the patient or something like that. And based on the last uh, epidemiological studies, and that means above which the radiation could be harmful for a radiation worker. Remember, this radiation worker, they put the value as 20 millisievert. And that is based on that factor that I said. It is actually, it doesn't say that 20 millisievert per year, but it also say that 10 microsievert per hour. Yeah? Because you work 2,000 hours per year, so 2,000 times 10 microsievert per hour makes 20 millisievert. So that okay. is the limit. Next one from Gunjan Sharma. Why public mm -hmm. dose is less than worker? Ah, this is this is naturally because uh, the. Public dose here, public means general public, not the public which comes to the treatment or something like that. Yeah, that means it could be persons who are coming with the patient or the public which are outside. That means they are not radiation worker. They do not work with radiation. And that's why a factor of 20 is applied for that. So instead of 20 millisievert, it is divided by 20 and they say one, one millisievert or something like that. This is also based on the epidemiological studies as low as possible or something like that. The other thing is that it is based on the background radiation that is get. It could be zero. Normally one could say public, why should public should get any radiation at all? It should be zero, right? Yeah, they are not working with radiation. So why should get they get any radiation at all. The problem is that you get background radiation. On the basis of the background radiation, then radiation coming out of your body or something like that, of the environment, they have compromised for a value which is one millisievert. That means below that, it is not possible, actually. Yeah. Okay? Okay, sir. And next one, why inverse square law is valid only for point source? For point source? Well, you can, can think I... of, you can think of, if I have a point source here, can any, everyone see me? Yes, sir. If I show, if I have a point source here, and if I have, Say, measuring the radiation, say if radiation is falling one gray per hour here, okay? Now I increase the distance by two. What happens? The radiation diverges, right? So radiation which was falling at this distance only on it, at the double the distance, it will fall four times the area of this. Okay, so increase the distance by two, the area, same radiation is falling, is four times the area. So that means each point is getting one fourth of the radiation. Okay, so that's why it says if you double the distance, the radiation fall is one fourth or something like that. For the, for the line source, it is not divergent, yeah? So that means if it's like this, you can think of this. This is this. If you increase the distance, it does, the area doesn't increase for the same radiation like four times, but mostly it is 
two times or three times or something like that. So they say for the line source, which is not a point source, it is not like inversely proportional, but it is linearly, inversely linearly proportional. Okay. Okay. So and next it's one not is like from... inversely square, but inversely linear. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Next one from Alma Karmanoma. Uh, mm -hmm. How exactly calculate the QF frequency? How? How exactly calculate the QF frequency? QF uh, frequency? Yes, sir. Well, normally, I mean, how often you have to do the QA, yeah? Yes, sir. Okay? Yeah, so normally, as I said, it depends on how often the equipment is used. Right, if, say for instance, HDR, although if it says daily QA, you are not using the HDR unit every day. You are using maybe two times a week. So that means although it is called a daily QA, it is actually a treatment day QA or something like that. But if, you, but if your unit is used every day, then you have to do the QA also every day, the daily QA or something like that. That's why I was saying that the frequency depends on the use, how frequently the equipment is used. If the equipment is used very frequently, then the QA should be done also very frequently. So there is no rule or something like that. It is under the licensing condition. In licensing condition, it is used how many patients will be treated by this unit or something like that. Okay? Yes, sir. And next one from... Raj Ahmed, how control mm -hmm. of rate and dose rate for radiation worker? How? How control or prevent dose rate for radiation worker? How control? Yes, sir. I hope I can see the question here so that. How control dose rate for radiation worker? How to control? Yes, sir. How to control the dose rate? As I said, uh, a radiation worker naturally wears a radiation monitor or something like that, and through which the radiation is measured or something like that. Yeah. Or when you enter in the radiation area, you carry a survey meter or something like that, which you hold in your chest level, and then radiation worker can see how much dose he's receiving or something like that, and I can say in most of the cases, they don't receive even one fifth or one tenth of what is allowed or something like. But that is a way to control it. Personal dosimeter, survey meter, or digital monitors or something where you can see the value at once or something like that. Yeah. Yes, sir. And another one from Mandi Chief. If the yeah. dose rate become too low in HDR treatment machine, the effect of these drugs reduction dose rate dose rate reduction will affect the outcome of the patient treatment. Uh, I can see the question. If the dose rate becomes too low in HDR treatment machine, the effect of this dose reduction will affect the outcome of the patient treatment. Yes. Now the dose rate in HDR treatment, it become low because the source is decaying. So every day the load, dose load goes less, 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 less. Now, if the dose rate goes low, if the activity goes low, then the dose rate is also going low. Okay? Perfect. So what will happen is that if the dose rate goes low, which means the activity is going low, the treatment time to give the same dose will get higher and higher. Yeah? Remember, activity is going down. You want to give the same dose, so you have to treat longer. It goes down, you have to treat even longer. So the treatment time goes longer and longer. This is the effect. And that's why what happens with the HDR source is that they change the source after every three months 
when the source activity is reduced to less than half of the original activity. This is not because the, the source is completely inactive. No, the source is still active, but the treatment time goes high and it is to reduce the patient discomfort because patient has to lie in that position longer, right? In order to be treated. So in order to reduce the discomfort of the patient, the source is changed. So yeah, the dose rate goes low and it will go low because the activity goes down. And if the activity goes down, the dose rate goes down. And that means in order to keep the same dose, you have to treat the patient longer. So the treatment time goes higher and higher and longer and longer. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you so much for your such informative session. Your excellent teaching skill and knowledgeable lecture has helped all the participants to learn. Mm -hmm. I want to extend my warmest thanks to both you know, all the uh, participants and thank you so much, sir. Thanks to uh, for their active participation to the program. I would also like to thank Dr. Gulam Abu Jakaria, founder chairman of Islam this year. And the entire team of Eastern DCR whose tireless efforts have made this platform functional for us. Before my, ending, thanks also, my thanks also to the SCMPCR for inviting me. And it is quite an enjoying experiment for me also. Okay. And yes. another thing is that if the students have any other questions, they can contact me by email and I will try to respond then. Okay. Sure, sir. Okay. Okay, before the ending, I remind you uh, that a uh, group discussion session on 21st February will be held uh, at 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. GMT. Okay. Where expecting tomorrow. your active participation. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. For any query or confusion from the previous lecture, you can discuss in the group discussion. Our other mm -hmm. speakers will be present there.